Welcome to the Rocky Mountain Association for College and Mission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this evening we'll be having a six by six college fair. So we'll have six colleges presenting for six minutes. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen at any time to type questions to our presenters. Your camera and microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so please be sure to sign up for more. And this session is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com backslash remacac. And with that, I'll turn it over to our first presenter, Chapman University. Them. Thank you very much and thank you all for tuning in. Once I get access to screen share, I will, oh, there we go. Perfect. Hopefully everyone can see this. Um, like I said, my name is Juliet Olson and I'm here to share some information about Chapman University really quickly. Quick overview, Chapman University is a medium-sized liberal arts institution located in the heart of Southern California. And over the next six minutes or so, I will unravel a little bit of what that means. So here you can see a picture of our campus. This is overlooking our Tola Piazza, which is often considered the heart of our campus. A lot of events and gatherings and, and hanging out hang out there. Um, so it's really a nice picture. You can see that we really are a new and modern campus, although we were originally founded in 1861. So that makes us one of the oldest institutions in the United States. So it's kind of cool to see how both of those play out. Um, what makes Chapman so unique? One of the main and integral pieces of the Chapman experience are our locations. Um, I know a lot of the colleges that are presenting today, if not all of them, are located in California, so you will likely be hearing about the benefits of that over this session, but you can see here Chapman University is located in Orange County. That is the sixth largest county in the United States, spanning 46 miles of coastline right in the middle of LA and San Diego. There's so much to do in the Southern California area to keep yourself entertained and the opportunity for pre-professional experiences, regardless of what field you're in, is also abundant. So our students really get the best of both worlds. They're able to come to Chapman and get a reputable educational experience experience, make the most of their time while they're there, and also start to build their network, make those connections, um, and build their resume so they can really hit the ground running um, once they graduate, whether they're wanting to start their career or continue their education, we're really able to set up our students for success. We also have a wealth of um, pre-professional resources and career resources to really help you navigate that process, and you'll see some statistics in the next few slides that really demonstrate that. To paint a little bit more of a picture of what Chapman is and who we are, we are the third largest private institution in California. Our total student body um, sits at just above 10,000 students in population. It's really the Goldilocks size, I would say, not too big, not too small. You're really able to come to Chapman and get that all-encompassing college experience, but we're able to really preserve that private small college education. You can see here, our average class size is 24 students. Our student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. So you can feel confident that you're able to individualize your education, personalize it at the same time, um, and really mold it to be perfectly designed for you. We also are proud of our diversity at Chapman University. Geographically alone, we have over 48 states, two territories, and 83 different countries represented on our campus. So by joining the Chapman family, you're plunged into a community full of students, staff, faculty members coming from all different walks of life. Chapman University is a liberal arts institution. I mentioned that at the start of my presentation. And what that means really is that we empower our students to explore different academic programs. So you're really able to find out what your true interests are, your passions, what that looks like as a major, and what that looks like in a career field field at large. So we have a wide variety of different academic programs. They span across a really wide spectrum, so you have a lot to choose from. Um, here you can see as well, I mentioned this a few slides ago, but at Chapman University, we really value that pre-professional um, aspect of the collegiate experience. We think that having those hands-on experiences is really what leads our students to success long term. And like I said, we have a wide variety of resources to really facilitate that which is why over 96% of our students have some type of experiential learning before they graduate. 
Also, Chapman University is an R2 classified school, and that places us in the top 10% of research institutions across the entire United States. And that spans across all different colleges throughout our institution, not just the sciences as well. And you can get started with that as early as your freshman year. A reoccurring theme, if you ask current students or alumni, why did you choose Chapman? A lot of them would say the community, the campus community involvement and the engagement throughout campus as a whole. So you can see here, we have so many different opportunities for students to get involved. So um, whether you're you know, hitting the books in the class, getting involved on campus in one of our um, many different clubs and organizations, sports, civic engagement, Greek life is very vibrant at Chapman. You're really able to make sure you're getting that all-encompassing experience, like I mentioned, and you're making the most out of the collegiate chapter of your life. Here you can see some information for our application process. I want to spend just a little bit of time here. We have two major deadlines, November 1 and January 15th. Um, if you submit your application November 1, you'll likely get your admission decision in mid-December. January 15th, admission decision will likely come in mid-March. Um, we do everything through the Common App, so it's a streamlined application process in that sense. At Chapman University, we also offer a wide variety of financial aid opportunities. Over 86% of our student body um, receives some type of financial aid. So while our sticker price of tuition is on the higher side, we have a lot of different funding opportunities to make that cost of tuition obtainable. All right, I am the admission counselor who manages all of our um, applicants and works with students coming from this state. So if you have any questions, here's my contact info and I'll drop some more links in the chat. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is California Lutheran University. Hi everyone, my name is Wes Sullivan and I'm the Associate Director of Undergraduate Admission at Cal Lutheran. Um, I have the great fortune of working with all students from the state of Colorado, um, also from Colorado myself, uh, so I have a lot of fun uh, reconnecting and chatting about areas in, in Colorado and California. We're located also in Southern California, we're in Thousand Oaks, which is halfway between Los Angeles and Santa Barbara. Uh, and I'll advance here, let's see, maybe. There we go. Tell you a little bit about our campus community. Um, so we're a little bit smaller than Chapman, about 3,000 undergraduate students. Our average class size is 17. Uh, and you can see on the screen a lot of different stats that might help uh, see how you might fit into our community. About a third of our incoming students uh, and students on campus generally identify as first generation college students. Uh, and just over half identify as coming from a traditionally underrepresented background. Our average class size is 17. Uh, and you can see we have people that come to Cal Lutheran from all over the country and all over the world. Uh, we're about a half hour from Malibu in the ocean. Uh, so like Juliet was sharing, uh, we have a lot of great uh, connections in the Southern California area. One of the most common questions that we receive uh, is if you have to be a Lutheran to attend Cal Lutheran University. Uh, the answer to that is of course not. Uh, we do have students that from 39 different faith backgrounds represented on our campus. And we don't have requirements as far as attending worship services, but we do have a lot of opportunities to engage if that's of interest to you. On the academic side, we have 41 majors and 41 minors. You can see some of our most popular majors listed on the screen. None of our programs are impacted, which means you'll always be able to get into the classes that you need. Uh, and a cool thing about being at Cal Lutheran is that when you apply to the institution, uh, you're not applying to a school or major, you're applying to Cal Lutheran as a whole. So once you're admitted, you're admitted to all of our majors and programs, uh, and you can switch at any time if you change your mind. We also have a four to finish guarantee. So we'll guarantee that you'll graduate in four years. Uh, and if for some reason you don't get those classes you need to graduate, we'll pay for those remaining classes. Uh, there are some eligibility requirements, but all incoming students are eligible. And I'd be happy to answer specific questions about that in the chat or afterwards. Uh, and in addition, we do have a lot of uh, four plus one programs. Uh, one of our most popular is with uh, School of Management and getting your MBA. Uh, but that can be a really great opportunity for students that know they wanna go um, into a graduate program to really double dip, shorten the time that they're in school, and of course, reduce the cost. On the academic support side, you'll find a lot of support at Cal Lutheran. Uh, the two primary methods you'll see are your faculty advisor, which will be from your major, and a student success coach from our academic services team. Uh, they'll both work with you. Uh, we're a liberal arts school, so we have a core curriculum and your major curriculum that you'll complete to graduate, uh, and both of them will work with you as a team to make sure you're meeting our core curriculum, uh, and your major requirements. 
In addition to that, we do have student support services, which is the federally funded TRIO program, uh, primarily for first generation college students, uh, and then disability support services as well. So if you need any academic accommodations or you've had those in high school, we're happy to work with students individually to get you the support that you need in the classroom. Uh, lastly, we do have a math and writing center on our campus. We know those two disciplines can be some of the more challenging as you're adjusting to the college workload. And um, they do have drop-in tutoring and different programming to help you really build uh, your writing and math skills. Uh, experiential learning is a big part of your experience at Cal Lutheran. Uh, you'll see that manifest in three primary ways, uh, through study abroad, internships, and undergraduate research. We offer study abroad programs in over 80 countries, and quite a few of the programs operate at the same expense as a semester on our campus. Uh, so you'll know that if a semester on our campus is affordable for you, that a study abroad semester will be as well. Hundreds of our students do internships every semester as well. Most, uh, many majors offer internships uh, as a requirement to complete the major, uh, and many more offer credit toward an internship. So if you want to get that hands-on experience, you can get course credit and a little bit of release from your course schedule to do that. Uh, and then, of course, undergraduate research is available in all of our majors, and that can be a really great way to really apply what you're learning and gain some additional experience and have something for your resume, uh, either for career or for going into graduate school. On the student life side, we do have quite a few different uh, activities that happen on our campus. There's always something happening. Uh, we do not have a Greek system on our campus, so most of the programming is done through our student government uh, and athletics. Uh, but you'll see we have intramural sports and a lot of different fun events that our student government plans each year. Uh, one of the ones that always makes me laugh is the Let It Snow event that happens in the big park in the center of our campus where we bring in several tons of snow uh, and do sledding and snowball fights. Um, it's really fun for a lot of people that don't have snow, uh, but being from Colorado in the snow, it always kind of gives me a chuckle. Uh, but in addition to that, we do have over 100 different student clubs and organizations you can be a part of. Uh, another thing I think that really sets us apart is we do have 15 different residence halls on our campus and we'll guarantee housing for four years. Uh, so you'll have an opportunity in all of our halls. Um, uh, you'll have free parking, laundry, uh, Wi-Fi, air conditioning, private bathrooms, all of those great things, and a lot of really great dining options on our campus as well. On the athletic side, we have 22 Division III intercollegiate athletic teams uh, and some really ridiculously nice facilities. Uh, if you're interested in athletics, I'd really encourage you to check out CLUsports.com to see a little bit more or ask any questions you have in the chat, and I'd be happy to connect on those. On the application side, we are a Common App school, uh, so you'll apply through Common App. In addition to the application itself, we require transcripts and a letter of recommendation. We are test optional, so if you'd like to submit SAT or ACT test scores, you can, uh, but are not required to. And we do also have two application deadlines, a November 1st early action deadline and an April 1st regular decision deadline. And then finally, on the scholarship side, 97% of our students receive some form of financial assistance. Uh, with our average package being just over $37,000. And we do offer tuitions, full tuition scholarships. So a lot of really great opportunities. Uh, thank you so much for your time and joining us and I'll turn it over to our next presenter. Thank you so much. Our next presenter, presenter is Soka University of America. Hello, everyone. I'm very happy today to be with you talking about Soka University of America. My name is Chelsea, and I'm with the Office of Admission. So Soka, we are a small private liberal arts college, also in Southern California, in the town of Aliso Viejo. We're on 100 acres, and we're three miles inland of Laguna Beach and the Pacific Ocean, which is really nice. The mission of Soka University of America is to foster a steady stream of global citizens committed to living a contributive life. This was given to us by our founder in the hopes that we will create a society where education is for the betterment of humanity. The word Soka is a Japanese translation of the concept value creation. So by being a Soka student, you are creating value with your life. The town we are specifically in is Aliso Viejo, California. We have 450 students, so it's a very small intentional community. And 40% of our student body is international, coming from 30 different countries. We are 100% residential community, so our students do live all, all four years um, within the SOCA community. We offer a singular major, the BA in Liberal Arts, but have five concentrations, as well as a study abroad requirement. All of our students do a senior capstone research project, which helps prepare them for grad school and their jobs afterwards. We have a seven to one student to faculty ratio and we use discussion dialogue based learning, very much Socratic seminars and our average class size is 12. Soka competes in NAI athletics and we offer merit and need based financial aid. 
Our general education focuses on combining Eastern and Western philosophies. Soka is non-sectarian, but we're very proudly founded on the Buddhist principles of peace, human rights, and the sanctity of life. So all of our core classes touch on those really important topics. Uh, we also have our study abroad requirement. At SOC, it's tied to language. So all students will take Spanish, Japanese, French, or Mandarin Chinese for two years. And then during their junior year, study abroad for a full semester in a city that speaks that language. We enroll the students at local university and they're taking all their classes in their target language. Um, includes, of course, you know, host family, local roommate for the housing situation. Um, and so can make sure that you get to do those cultural and natural wonders within your host country because the cost is built into tuition since it is a graduation requirement. For any undocumented students or students who cannot leave the country safely or health for health reasons, there is a domestic alternative. We have five concentrations within our BA of Liberal Arts, which include environmental studies, humanities, international studies, life sciences, and social behavioral sciences. Our concentrations are different than minors because they're not preset. Students get control in deciding the combination of classes as long as three of them are upper division within their concentration. In terms of our residential life, uh, all of our first years are in a double. After that, it is, it is a suite, and every um, roommate pair only shares one bathroom. We have a SOCA shuttle, which helps bring students off campus. We have a full-time mental health counselor, a full-time health center that is staffed on school days, disability services, which coordinates both academic and residential accommodations, uh, the Office of Career Development and Internships, which helps tap into the SOCA alumni network and a full meal plan, plus the community kitchen if students want to bake banana bread. We have 30 different student-led clubs. So it's a very welcoming community, so you can definitely start new activities if you have an interest that's kind of new. Um, we have 15 different affinity groups based on the, the specific identities on campus, student government, orientation leaders. All of our first years move in a month before our returning students in order to orient themselves to campus, resident assistant leadership positions, as well as on-campus employment, the Office of Service Engagement for alternative spring break and short-term community service projects, recreation classes and programs, the SOCA Performing Arts Center and the SOCA Art Gallery, as well as our Critical Conversation Lecture Series. These are some sample posters done by our Residential Life team that again really focus on building community, on celebrating different identities, on life skills, as well as stress relief. We compete in the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics as part of the CalPAC division for men and women's soccer, cross country, track and field, swimming and diving, and women's golf. Most of our students are actively recruited and do go on to compete at the national level, but we will take walk-ons. So about a quarter of our student body participates in athletics. SOCA is also on the common app, which helps simplify things. We, our application checklist is, um, is centered on a holistic review process. So there's no minimum GPA or requirements to come to SOCA. And for fall 2022, we will continue being test optional. Our financial aid, our tuition is about 32,000 and our room and board is about 13. So SOCA tries to be really affordable. 98% um, of our students qualify for financial aid and um, majority of our students are coming um, for very low cost because of our SOCA opportunity grant. For any families making under 60,000 US dollars, including our undocumented and international families, SOCA will cover the full cost of tuition. For families above that, it's a sliding scale. We offer merit scholarships from $5,000 to $13,000 that are renewable all four years at SOCA, plus there's additional scholarship opportunities just for the SOCA student body. And again, with 450 students, you have a very good chance of securing one of those. Our students can qualify for athletic scholarships. We participate in the federal loan program, and SOCA offers institutional loans to our families who do not qualify for a federal loan. Um, and lastly, we do have federal and state funding. Um, students can apply those at SOCA. So last year we awarded almost $14 million in institutional aid alone, not counting on um, federal money. This is our Office of Admission. There are four domestic counselors and two international counselors. Um, Jimmy and I support the students from the Rocky Mountain region, and we are very happy to have you follow us on our social media where we can then connect you with other opportunities to learn about SOCA. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next presenter is University of San Francisco. Uh, 
Hello, everyone. My name is Hervé Malone. And I'm sharing my screen. Awesome, awesome. All right, so I'm one of the assistant directors of admission here at University of San Francisco. Uh, so thank you all for being here. And also to our future students and families who are uh, viewing this online um, recorded later on. Uh, so USF, it's a, it's a mid-sized uh, Jesuit, uh, private Jesuit university. Uh, we sit in the heart of uh, the city as we like to call it uh, in San Francisco. Uh, it's a beautiful 55 acre uh, campus and we're right in a residential neighborhood uh, as well. Uh, as, far, as far as being a, a Jesuit university, uh, we hold to a lot of the Jesuit values um, and we really um, install those on our campus um, as well. Uh, Cura personalis is something that uh, we really stick to. We're caring for the, the whole person, mind, body, and spirit um, as well. And also a lot of um, clubs and student clubs that are, are really stemmed and built out of our social justice uh, initiatives and efforts uh, as, as well. Um, in terms of um, our campus being uh, diverse, it is extremely diverse. If you've done any research, you know that uh, San Francisco is one of the most diverse cities in the world, uh, but our student body is actually more diverse uh, than the city of San Francisco. Um, overall, we're ranked in the top five in terms of the most diverse campus um, in the world, according to US News World and Report. Uh, so that's something we're excited about. Uh, our faculty really love and enjoy teaching uh, to such a, a diverse environment um, as well. Um, it just really, the students enjoy it, the discussions that take place in the classroom, our students really grow and learn uh, because of the conversations uh, that take place as well. Uh, but not just ethnic diversity, we also have uh, geographic diversity. So we have students coming from all 50 states, uh, many different countries speaking uh, different languages as, as well. Um, as I mentioned, we are a, a private uh, Catholic uh, university, but um, only 28% of our student body actually identifies as being Catholic. So 72% are, are non-Catholic. Um, so we have about 20 or so different religions represented across our campus, um, even students that uh, happen to be non-religious as well. So just in terms of the diversity on our campus, it's so many ways uh, to get involved and plugged in to a community um, on campus that you can feel a part of and, and learn and grow from as well. We have many different uh, student clubs and organizations, over 100 different opportunities to get involved with. Uh, we're Division I uh, school, have athletics at the, compete at the highest intercollegiate uh, level. We also have club sports and intramural sports um, as well. Uh, we have uh, Greek life. So if you're interested in joining fraternities and sororities, you can totally uh, do that as well. In terms of our academics, we have about 45 or, or so different uh, majors uh, to choose from with about 72 minors um, on our campus. Some of our more popular majors are business, bio, psychology, sociology. Uh, we even have some unique majors such as politics. Um, and some of our most competitive uh, majors are nursing and um, engineering. Uh, nursing is, is pretty attractive just because it's a direct entry program. So it's highly, highly competitive. Uh, it's a top 25 program as well. In terms of our, our classroom environment, we have uh, average class size of 25 students. Uh, faculty, a student to faculty ratio of 13 to 1. So it, it is a mid sized campus, but a small campus feel uh, just because the teachers will know who you are um, on campus. Uh, we have some brand new dorms being built. So we're super excited about that, adding another 600 beds uh, to our campus um, as well, um, and just really generating more uh, students living on campus, more school spirit. Um, and um, all that fun stuff as well. Have some fun traditions on campus, some concerts, and um, some other types of traditions that our students really enjoy um, throughout the year as well. In terms of our applying to our campus, uh, we have three different ways to apply. We are an early action and an early decision school. Um, those deadlines are uh, November the 1st. And then also we, you can apply a regular decision, which that deadline is a little bit later in the cycle, uh, January the 15th. Uh, you can find our application on the Common App. 
Uh, we are a test optional school. We also have uh, letter recommendations um, that we made optional uh, this year, and as well as uh, we are accepting unofficial transcripts from our students. Um, in terms of our finances, uh, about 90% of our students are receiving some form of uh, merit aid uh, on our campus. Uh, we have some different scholarships that students can apply and qualify for um, as well. So uh, I'll be looking forward to if you have any questions, you can submit those in the chat and I'll be looking forward to connecting with you after. Thank you and go Dons. Thank you so much. Okay, unfortunately, it looks like Holy Names was, um, oh wait, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Santa Clara University is next. I'm, I'm so sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to the uh, presentation. Um, I'm waiting just to get some screen share privileges and we'll get started here really quickly. Yeah, but, you can uh, go ahead and take over. Uh, for some reason, it's still not letting me. Oh, okay, let me stop my screen. No worries. But hi everyone, my name is uh, Lorenzo Gamboa. I am the Senior Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Santa Clara University. It's an honor, a privilege to be here with you guys today. Um, I am a Colorado native myself, so I came out to Santa Clara, did my undergraduate, so the information you're going to hear, extremely, extremely biased, all right? Uh, Santa Clara is the oldest university in the state of California. We've been around since 1851. Um, the nice thing is that we actually have a lot of history, rich history that actually, and we sit on the lands of the Ohlone, Muecma Ohlone people, who actually trace their ancestry through the mission Dolores, Santa Clara, and San Jose. We always remember that their connections to our region and give thanks to the opportunity to live, work, learn, and pray in their traditional homeland. With much respect, we thank the elders and to all the Ohlone people of the past, present, and the future to allow us to do what we do every day. Right now, Santa Clara is located right in the heart of Silicon Valley. About 55% of the student body comes from in-state, 45% of it comes from out-of-state. What's really crazy is that Colorado is my fourth largest setting state, Santa Clara, which is exciting. We are represented almost in every single state in the country with the exception of North Dakota. So if you know anybody for some reason there, get them to apply. I need that 50th state already. We are growing our footprint internationally, which is great because this is a global campus. You're gonna meet and connect with a lot of students. What makes us unique across other institutions is that yes, uh, the heart of Silicon Valley gives you a unique opportunity and emphasis. Your neighbor here, Google, Yahoo, Lockheed, eBay, NASA, and Young, KBY, Price, Carterhouse, Deloitte, Netflix, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Tesla, Electronic Arts, NVIDIA, you name it, it's here. We currently have more job offers, more internship offers, than actually current students enrolled. Now, amongst the other differentiating factors, we are a Jesuit campus, just like my colleagues up north, USF, who just presented. Uh, we represent one of 27 campuses in the country, and what we like to pride ourselves in is not just mentally preparing you, but physically, spiritually, the whole nine yards. Uh, right now, 50% of the student body tells me they're Catholic, 50% comes from every other denomination. The only time I ever see that change is during finals week, when everybody's praying to pass the class. But other than that, it's a pretty welcoming uh, campus, and we do expect you guys just to learn about anything and everything, and how you guys can become conscious, competent, and compassionate by the time you guys graduate. So studying abroad, immersion programs, community-based projects, all that stuff, big, big hands-on projects for Santa Clara education. Currently about 5,500 undergraduates, 3,000 graduates on top of that, but I am trying to grow. I wanna be 6,000 by 2025. So for the next four years, I will be taking more students. Once I hit that 6,000 mark, I will best decline really, really fast. 11 to one faculty student ratios. You will only be taught by faculty here, never grad students in the classroom. Average class 23, 24. Impressive retention rates, over 90%, which is great for you, horrible for me. Because that means when we read our, your applications, we have to make sure that we're bringing in the right students because many of you decide to stay here. That was me. I woke up winter quarter, realized I didn't have to shovel any more snow. I said I could stay here, right? The other thing is almost 90% of you will graduate in four years. What's crazy about it is that not only will you graduate in four years, but most of you will double major, double minor, study abroad and do all of that in four years. The ones that mess up my um, numbers here, my business and my engineers. Why? Because you guys get the opportunity to stay here for five years and get a master's and a bachelor's degree. 
which makes perfect sense, especially for our location. Engineers, you guys can go all the way and do PhD if you choose. We were also founded as a liberal arts institution. So just because we are in Silicon Valley, yes, business and engineering is really, really hot, but don't forget, we have the arts side. But if you're nerdy like I was and really want to get down and dirty with your education, you can do that right away from year one, not when you're a junior or senior like at other schools. And don't forget, again, the creative arts. So get involved with anything and everything. Balance your brain, left and right side, to strengthen all the opportunities you can have. We are 20 Division I sports, 19 club sports, and over 150 clubs and organizations. And everybody always asks me, what do I want? I want nerds. I want people who aren't afraid to push themselves to the next level. Uh, push our faculty, push our staff, but at the same time, be flexible enough to go paint your face and get on ESPN every once in a while. So get involved. Housing, ridiculously nice here at Santa Clara. Two-year housing policy now. So first year, second year, 100% of you will live on campus. After that, it's totally up to you, but I do have housing for all four years. Everything from a traditional two beds, two desks, community bathroom down the hall, all the way to suite style, where you can get your own bedroom, share a living room, share a kitchen, basically an apartment on campus. Okay. Freshman 15, freshman 40, though, are going to come up really fast. Food here in the Bay Area is ridiculously good. Again, every culture, every language, and again, all the food that you can taste accessible 24-7. So you have to be involved here. And being outdoors, being indoors, being whatever it is you want to do, come out, enjoy it. Partake in something that we started when I was here called the Colorado Native Challenge. You wake up really early, winter quarters, go ski Tahoe come back down, have dinner in San Francisco, come back down, have a bonfire in Santa Cruz, and the first person that falls asleep, you baptize them in the Pacific Ocean. We are only on the Common App. You apply to each program. We are direct entry. So you tell us what it is that you wanna do and you'll fly with them. Here's how we look at your applications. So take a quick screenshot of that and let me know if you have questions after, but your deadlines are coming up. So apply, apply early. I can't emphasize that more. You have better odds in early versus regular. So connect with us, let us know how we can support your education moving forward, and we look forward to your Q&A. Thank you very much. Okay, well, I'm going to put our presenters on the spot here, and I'm going to ask them to uh, answer this question, which I'm going to pull up on the screen right now. Uh, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And uh, we'll start up at the top with Chapman and just have you uh, all go around and answer that question. Awesome. Thank you. My number one piece of advice, and it's really applicable for this section where you're at in the application process is just to really do your research. If you're tuning in now, you're setting yourself up for success, but I know we covered a lot of information and there may have been a lot of similarities in all of our institutions, but there's a lot of differences as well. And that's really what should be driving your college search. So if you really do your research, you get familiarized with different institutions, you can relay that in different areas of your application and really stand out as an applicant overall. Um, I oversee primarily visits and events in my role, uh, in addition to working with students from Colorado. So I, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't say visit the campuses. Uh, I know it's not realistic for everyone uh, financially, or, and especially now in COVID times, it's a lot harder. Uh, but to the extent that you have the ability to visit campuses, I would highly encourage you to start doing that, especially since uh, you're tuning in now and starting that search early. Uh, there's a lot to be said for feeling what the environment is like, meeting the students, meeting the faculty, and really trying to picture yourself on a campus and getting a sense of, is this the right fit for me? Um, and for those of you that either financially or because of the distance can't make it to a campus, find ways to connect with people on that campus. I mean, a lot of us I know will offer virtual engagement opportunities, whether that's virtual tours, live or on demand, you can talk to students, you can talk to faculty. There are a lot of things that you can do remotely. Uh, so just try and connect and learn more about it and, and try and find a way that you can fit in with that campus. Yes, I love this. Um, I would also add to be very detailed in your questions <laughs> that you ask. Um, ask for a syllabus in a class you're really interested in and see, you know, how how do the teachers grade? How do they do things like that? Um, ask for the contact information for a specific club that you're interested in joining. Um, we are here to help 
connect you with information. That's our responsibility in helping you figure out if our schools are the right place for you to apply and be considered. So please, please, uh, we're not just there for the general stuff. We're there for the nitty gritty details too. Yeah, and I'll just add that, just try to connect with us. I know at, at USF, we, we did a strong pivot and we offer so many different virtual opportunities for students and families to connect. Uh, we even um, offer events that go down all the way to the sophomore level, junior level, and then all the way up. And, and this year we also op offered a lot of um, in, in individual events that were um, particular to a, a, a certain major. So it's not like a, a huge event. So um, just more ways to do your research and get connected to the school and see if this is truly a good fit for you is something that uh, we just wanted to put out there. And even when we go back to in-person, uh, we still will offer a lot of these virtual events just for students and parents and families that might not be able to make it to campus. And I'll say, um, you know, being a first gen, I know it can be scary, but just even contemplating leaving the state can be really, really scary. So my advice to each and every one of you is don't sell yourself off short. I mean, you know, go out there, apply to the best schools um, and just put your best foot forward and put all the details you can in your application. And if it's gonna be the right school for you, you'll gain admission, so. Okay, next question. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Oh, are we starting with me again? Yes. Okay, I'll go for it. Um, my favorite event and tradition, it's both, is an event on our campus called Skit. During this event, all of the clubs, ch Greek chapters on our campus or different organizations are um, put challenged to do this big performance on stage. And it's crazy how good these performances are. I could never be in them. Be I'm an alumna of Chapman University, but I cannot dance or perform for the life of me. But it was equally as fun every single year because I saw all of my friends on stage. So um, if you have time, go on YouTube and just type in Chapman University skit and you'll see a bunch of different options. And then you can kind of get a visual of what I'm talking about. I think one of my favorite events and traditions on our campus, uh, in addition to the let, the let It Snow event I talked about earlier, uh, during new student orientation, we have CLU rocks up on the hillside above our campus, uh, and our incoming first year class and transfer students paint them white again every year, and it turns into a giant paint fight at the top of a mountain, uh, and everyone just gets covered in white paint and comes down the hill, and it's, it's just fun on our campus because for like the first week, you see people with white paint in their hair that they can't get out, uh, and it really helps bond the community and help connect to one another. Um, and it's turned into sometimes people will do pranks and paint them colors for different athletic events or for holidays or things like that. So just a fun, uh, easy thing to do um, and way to bond with others. I love these so much. <laughs> um, for me, we have a, like a totally student run tradition of 50 days and 100 days. So when there's 100 days until graduation, our, um, you know, the underclassmen students will get together and kind of do a performance and write poetry songs in appreciation to the, the seniors who are leaving for what they've taught them, you know, over the years. And then at 50 days, the seniors kind of do their farewell to the student body. Um, and people who are on study abroad send in videos. And they're really cheap. Like some of them are really, really moving pieces and others are super, you know, inside jokes between friends and clubs and teams and things like that. But it's super cute to watch. I'll have to say Donna Roo, um, that is something that all the students love on campus. They always talk about it. Uh, it's our spring music concert uh, on campus that we put on for our students. Uh, we bring an up and coming artist uh, every year to present. We'll see how that goes post COVID, you know, um, if that still continues, but just hearing the students' excitement um, about that is something that you don't want to miss. Nice. Um, other than the Colorado Native Challenge I mentioned earlier, I would say do um, senior scavenger hunt, which is, you know, getting all the seniors and they do a memorable like scavenger hunt that the faculty and staff put together, uh, which is actually pretty awesome. So. Okay. And one 
more question for you all. Um, what is a fun fact about your school? Okay, I shared this because it's in our presentation, but it really is a fun fact. Chapman University was originally founded in 1861, which makes us one of the oldest colleges in the United States. But we moved from Northern California to Southern California in the late 1990s, early 2000s, which is why we have such a modern um, and new campus. So you really do get the best of both worlds because we have those deep roots, but it doesn't really look like it on our campus. Trying to think what to share. I, the one that comes to mind quickly, uh, we are the uh, training facility for the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, they do practice uh, on our campus. Um, and then another one that just popped into my head, uh, the voice of Tony the Tiger. So the, the, their great voice uh, used to be a faculty member in our communication department. So fun. Um, for me, I would say the opposite, thinking of age. Um, so because we're about to celebrate our 20th anniversary <laughs> this May. So we're baby, baby college. But um, uh, the foundation, like the actual material that Soka is made out of, it travertine came with the same shipment that is built the Getty Museum up in Los Angeles. And it's, you know, supposed to last a thousand years. So the hope is that the university will last much, much longer. Awesome, awesome. Well, being a former student athlete, I have to go with the sports fact about the school. Um, our, one of our alums is uh, Bill Russell, and he has 11 NBA championships. And what is probably the most uh, cool thing is that the NBA Finals MVP is, is now named after him as well. So he's still alive. And um, every year they present that MVP to whoever you know, the finals is and his name's on it. So that's a pretty cool fact um, and memory you know, to, to USF. That's pretty awesome. Um, the Santa Clara has Steve Nash too, so not sure. Uh, <laughs> but uh, an interesting fact, we were known as the University of Santa Clara. Um, so if you take those initials and you again, use them, that's not us anymore. So when you write to us, it's SCU, Santa Clara University, because we had to sell off the rights to the other one, so. Well, thank you everyone for sharing all those really great facts, that wonderful advice, and uh, of course, taking time to present tonight. And thank you everyone for joining us, students and families. When this window closes, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. So please sign up for more. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this recording and others at strivescan.com backslash uh, And with that, thank you everyone and have a great night.